So far, we covered four different uh, number systems, and uh, the Babylonian number system is the only one kind of using this positional number system. And they didn't have that uh, symbol for zero for a long time period, but later they could put some placeholder for that, right? Uh, but there are other historical backgrounds about uh, using this zero and kind of positional system. So please read the textbook and here. But in our lecture note, we are going to just do that uh, the other part, right? Okay. So for for some explanation about it. Okay. Uh, so right now, let's thinking about any positional number system, which means we have a place value for each, right? Or some weight for each. So unit position and like a tenth and hundreds, but just please think more more openly, right? So ten doesn't mean the number ten that we know. It could be any base. So right now our number system use ten for our base, which is place value. Right? Then if it's a second place, we have to multiply that place value with, uh, by 10. But if it's a third position, then we have to multiply by 10 squared. We multiply the place value twice for that. So the first, the, the most right-hand side uh, position, uh, we didn't put multiply anything at all. So we just accept that number itself. So these are the meanings of the positional number system. And everything based, uh, depending on what base we use for that place value. Okay. So if it's a typical our decimal number system, the meaning is our base is 10. So like uh, 3,457 is same as 3 times 1,000. And okay, this is wrong. Okay. This should be 4, right? Yeah. Or let me change that on to zero. Okay. So zero means it's, it's multiplied by 100, but it's still zero. And 50 means 5 times 10 and plus 7. So we know how, how we're going to handle this one. But what happens if you have a different basis? So the most typical and famous bases are 10 and binary, okay, and octal, and hexadecimal, and like a 36. So if that base is less than 10, then we could handle it. And most of all, in this type of positional number system, we definitely need a symbol for zero. So for decimal, we need 10 symbols to denote it, but it's uh, 1 through 9, and the last one is not for 10, but something some symbol to denote no values in there, something like that, right? So binary case, 0, 1, and octal case, 0 to 7 is enough, right? But what happens if that base is greater than 10? Then we have to invent or assign new symbols for each of that unit values, right? So for example, for base 16, we have to put 0 through 9, and instead of developing and inventing new sign, it's kind of complicated for everybody, we just use the alphabet okay, letters there, starting from A, so A through F. Okay. So if we say D in hexadecimal case, then that is same as like A, A is for 10, B is 11, C is 12, and D is 13. So that is exactly the same as 13. So be careful. D is based with 16, and 13 is based with 10. Okay. So that's how I use that subscription letter or number after that given number, which denotes what base system we are using. Okay. So without having any numbers such like that, then that's the decimal notation with base 10. But if it's not, then I'm going to put that what base we are using there. Okay? So for 36 case, then we need the first 10. And for 27, is A through Z. 
if that base is greater than 36, we have to put some other kind of symbols for that. Okay? Then question is, how can you calculate? How, how do you know how big that number is? And most likely we are familiar with uh, base 10 case, right? So if you have uh, some number with base which is not 10, then we want to convert that number to the decimal. And from decimal to that base. So we need to practice like that. And this is the typical formula or notation for any uh, positional number system. So we already did this one before, but remember that B in this notation is for the base. So like if you have 1, 2, 3, 4, and at, if that is decimal notation, then we multiply 1000 to 1, and 100 to 2, and 10 for 3, and leave the unit for as it is. And then you can change this one to 1 times 10 cubed, 2 times 10 squared, 3 times 10, and plus 4. Then this one denotes like that is a1. Okay, or in this case in reverse way, so it's gonna be a3 and b3, right? And a2 b squared and a1 and b to d1 and a0 times b to d0, but any number to d0 is 1, right? So you can skip that portion. Okay? And that can be written by, when you look at each term, those numbers are matching, right? So, ai times b to the i, and i from 0 to, in this case, up to 3, right? So simply you can write down this way. And of course, we have to know what ai is, right, for each different cases. But that portion is always the same, right? The only uh, changes are what base we are using for b, right? So, let's practice with this number. Let's change this number to decimal value. So, 4579. So, we're still with 4579, but with base 9, if you want to make sure that, you can put uh, parentheses around it, just to be between you and me, right? For this course only. But. So, it's going to be 4 times. Now, be careful. Our base is 9, not 10, like here. But all the other parts are the same, so it's going to be 9 cubed, right? Plus 5 times 9 squared, plus 7 times 9 to the 1 is 9. And the last one is 9 itself. So 9 cubed, 9 squared is 81, so multiply by 9 is 9 and like that, so 729. And nine, 5 times 81. 7 times 9 plus 9. And whatever the number is, I believe it's going to be 33, 93. Okay? So, with base 9, 4579 is equal to 3393 with base 10. So, please do the same way. That part. The next one is for <coughs> this is for easier calculation okay? because right now we need to convert everything to in this notation. Then we have to calculate each one of them. Adding is a kind of long uh, kind of process. So instead, let's look at what happens here. When you convert this given number with any base, can be translate like this, right? With the, the summation notation, like a i times base to the i. Okay? But when you look at this first n minus 1 term, except the unit value, every term has 5 as a common factor. So we can factor out 5. And the remaining one is this much, right? Then look at just first to 2 in this case terms, not the last one. Then that also has 5 as a common factor, so we can factor out that again. So when you place this one in this format, 
then the method here is bring down one and actually subtracting uh, adding one but there's nothing in this is one and multiply by this one so one times five is here and we want to add okay. so one times five plus two and we multiply this one with five again put it there right and we want to add this again we got that form then we do again multiply five by that so we are going to get so when you add this one we are going to get that form which is exactly same as this result right but of course for actual calculation should look like this way right then it's going to be much faster calculation so we call this is synthetic division okay, for converting to decimal from any other base system okay. so let me use the previous number which is like a 4579 with base 9 let's convert this one to decimal we already know the result was 3393 right let's just use this method so for that all you need is write down each unit value and using the given base for that number which is 9 in this case the first one you just adding them there's nothing so going down 4 and multiplying is 36 adding this so 41 multiply 9 so 369 add these two so 376 multiply by 9 so 54 68 27 so 33 right so when you add by 9 we are going to have uh, 3 and going up 1 and 33 and we got exactly the same result right so when you compare this method and the previous one you realize this one kind of is very similar each other right but just thinking about uh, that synthetic method as a, a little bit simpler version of this one okay? for, for the problem of this one is we it requires a lot of multiplication right like a b to the for any base to the seven b to the six right then you have to calculate that one first and multiply with other numbers but in this case all you need is simply multiply nine for every time right so it's gonna give you much faster and safer kind of calculation for everything okay so let's go to the next one what happens if our base is greater than 10 and the problem is, for example, like this, A3B with base 12. And when you really try to calculate in the previous method, and it's 12, so A going down A, okay, then what is A times 12? Hmm, right? It's not that much kind of clear enough, especially this is 12, so it's going to be kind of simpler one, but if it's like a 27 or 36, 105, whatever, then even handling those symbols is probably right? so before doing applying this method, this is just one small suggestion. Write down the given symbols and convert them each number to the corresponding decimal number, right? A for 10, right? And 3 is 3, B for 11, right? Then instead of those use this converted number with that base right and then we know how to multiply those so bring down 10 and multiply by 12 so adding this and multiply by 12 right 120 times 12 times 123 right and adding this whatever it is right and it's in here so that way is much more simpler and safer okay, compared to the others. Okay, okay. So let's uh, 
let's kind of apply this one to the following one. In this case, <coughs> the base is 16. So let me write down those symbols to the decimal notations. It's going to be 11, 7, 7, 0, and F is, I think, 15, right? Then with 16, right? So 11, and 11 times 16, 176. Right? So adding this is 183. Then 183 times 16, 92, right? So it's going to be 292, right? So it's 2928. So it's going to be still 2928. And multiplying 16 one more time, right? So whatever the result, all you need is adding those two, which will be the decimal value for the given number. Okay? Just fill out those. And that's what we can calculate. Okay?